I'm Nick Bly, welcome to Pocket News for Friday the 7th of October. Today on the show, Oculus finds some middle ground and over the edge. All right, here's what's been making headlines. And first up, Washington State has issued a warning to Valve. Stop ignoring illegal gambling. Or else. Also, put out Half-Life 3. Because we can't take it anymore. Just can't cope. Honestly, though, I would prefer a new Left 4 Dead. Maybe Dota 3. The issues of Counter-Strike skin gambling have been well documented across the last few months, with Valve themselves threatening legal action against some of the bigger sites which offer the service. Tackling those websites was a step in the right direction, but it also stank of blame shifting. And it seemed apparent that Valve didn't really want to lift a finger to fix the problem. Can't our lawyers just make it go away? That was my Gabe. Just imagine him wearing thongs though. Well, the Washington State Gambling Commission seized my Gabe and is unimpressed, but not as unimpressed as it is with Valve. The activity of the operating third-party websites breaches the state's gambling laws, and while all of the dealings happen off-site, in the end, the transfers happen through the Steam client. The commission has issued an ultimatum. Valve has until the 14th of October to explain how it is in full compliance with Washington's gambling laws, or it will face civil or criminal charges from the state. So basically, Washington State pulled the same trick on Valve that Valve pulled on the big third-party sites. Hopefully they can bond over their shared enthusiasm for threats and work something out. Moving on, and the Oculus Conference had a delightful amount of Palmer Lucky. None. There were a few exciting hardware announcements though, with Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg making the big one. The team are working on a standalone headset which aims to find a happy middle ground between the high-end enthusiast rift and the lightweight mobile compatible Gear VR. The new device will be a standalone unit with position tracking, but there is no release date yet on this bad boy. Another new piece of gear revealed to the world was the company's in-ear headphones, which can easily replace the on-ear headphones which ship with the Rift. They're 50 US dollars, which is pretty steep. I don't really get why you'd buy these when the on-ear ones actually work really well. I guess there's just people out there who like the idea of plugging small plastic dolphin penises deep into their canals. Now I think about it, I'm one of them. The last piece of exciting hardware news was the release date for the Oculus Touch. It's dropping on the 6th of December for 200 US dollars. To tie in with the paddles, a bunch of new games were revealed which are being designed to take advantage of the upcoming controls. Some of the highlights came from Epic Games, who revealed playful robot destruction sim Robo Recall, Radiant Dawn had space thriller Lone Echo, and 4A Games, the developers behind Metro Last Light, showed off their post-apocalyptic action game Arctica 1. All in all, a good showing from the Oculus team, but maybe you are one of those people who doesn't believe in VR. Maybe Maybe you're one of those people who have in their very pocket right now something we are calling the smartphone. Well, there are games coming for you too. Just slipping into Newsreader. That Dragon Cancer has launched on iOS for those of you who didn't have the whole experience ruined by playing it yourself on PC or watching someone else play it on PC. Also out for iOS is Bioware's classic RPG Jade Empire. In vintage Bioware style, it's pushing the limits of what seems reasonable for a mobile game, coming in at 15 bucks. Jade Empire is a fantastic game, but I can't see myself ever getting $15 worth of joy out of an immersive, deep RPG on a touchscreen device. At least though the series is still in Bioware's sights. Perhaps a sequel? I'll take Dota 4 first. Just saying. Left 4 Dead 6. Pretty much anything except Half-Life. And finally, for all mobile peeps, a new Walking Dead game is coming. The Walking Dead March to War is a story-driven strategy game which will launch as a free-to-play title on iOS and Android in 2017. I'm guessing March. Next up, and Ubisoft have done it! They've officially confirmed Beyond Good and Evil 2 is in the works and that Michelle Oncel is at the helm. Oncel himself teased this week that his team were in pre-production on their new project, which thankfully is what we were anticipating. Now all we have to do is wait and pray that it doesn't suck and that Ubisoft don't get bored out. But this will suck because the Gears of War film is back in development. This time it has been picked up by Universal Studios. The idea for a Gears film first surfaced back in 2007 when New Line Cinema attempted to get it off the ground. But they couldn't because it sucked. So that bodes well. Here's something that doesn't suck. It's the thing of the day. Here's
Here's something many of us can sympathize with. Moose1c was taking a crack at Dark Souls 3 when the game's very first boss gave him a nasty taste of what he signed up for. Pocket News today, my Pocketeers. This afternoon, I answer your asks in Ask Pocket on our YouTube channel and also on our YouTube channel. Last night, we dropped a very special episode, a day with Phil Spencer. I got to spend the day last week with the head of Xbox down in Melbourne. Uh, heard him speak, got to tour some devs with him, and then uh, had a really nice interview with him there. It turned out great. We're really happy with it. We would love you to watch it and just share it with people and just do that thing. But it was, it was a really fascinating conversation with a really interesting, smart guy. Do you want to meet more interesting, smart people? Then come over to my house. And if I'm not there, then join the Pocketeers Facebook group and Steam group. There are links to everything I just said in the description below. Today's Thing of the Day graphic was made by Finn. If you are like Finn and you've made a thing, please send it in until we next send my Pocketeers Think by out. Mwah! No jokes. It's the end of the week. Can't think of anything else. Won't be funny. It's like Gus's chant. Why do you find video games so captivating? Yeah, for me, video games are such a unique art form that mixes the emotional with the physical. I sit and I watch a movie, I sit and I listen to music. In video games, I interact with a story, with characters, with sound that a very creative team have, has built and my physical input into that experience just makes it so much more visceral and kind of lands at a, a very core level for me.